There's a great article that was written in the Huffington Post maybe a few weeks ago by, by a rabbi by the name of Alan Lurie, if I'm not mistaken. And he wrote an article called The Allure of Spiritual Narcissism. It was an incredible article. And subhanAllah, it really blew my mind because it made me think of the Prophet ﷺ. As I was reading that article, I was thinking of the Prophet ﷺ, how the Prophet ﷺ warned us against everything that he was mentioning. And you know what he said? He said, spiritual narcissism is that the end goal of your spirituality is self-love and feeling amazing. The only thing you want out of your spirituality is to feel great. So it's like buying a new car or buying a new house or acquiring something else of this dunya. It's a self-help method. It's just to make you feel good. And is that supposed to be the goal of our deen, that we're just supposed to make ourselves happy? That we're just supposed to make ourselves feel good? Isn't that the exact opposite of what the Prophet ﷺ embodied? We find that Rasulullah ﷺ, I guarantee you, dear brothers and sisters, the way the Prophet ﷺ enjoyed his tahajjud, his qiyamul layl, is a way that none of us would be able to enjoy our prayer. The way the Prophet ﷺ loved to interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way he loved to stand at night, even with his feet swelling sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I guarantee you, if it was up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi could put himself in a room and just pray all day long, he would do it. Because he loved Allah that much. But that wasn't him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That wasn't what he was about alayhi salatu wa sallam. But you know what the crisis is sometimes? Obviously living the privileged lives that we do where it's all about me, 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 me. What can I do for myself? Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. I'm not happy today because this is happening. Why isn't Salah making me happy? Why isn't this convention, why isn't this halaqa getting to me? Me, 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 me. There's something else about that. That you know, sometimes the way to rid yourself of its ego and of its empty desires, its petty desires, is to attach it to a cause that is greater than it. And when you attach it to a cause that is greater than it, then you find yourself too busy thinking about greater things and in touch with greater things and in touch with serving the people to sit there and live out your animalistic desires all the time. It leads you to something else. It softens your heart. You know, there's a story that we find from the time of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas about a man by the name of Abu Mahjan al thaqafi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Abu Mahjan was a young man who used to always drink alcohol. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas had to constantly punish him. And eventually, when the Battle of Qadisiyah came, the time of the Battle of Qadisiyah came, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas said, you know what, I'm gonna tie you up, I'm just gonna hold you, I'm just gonna hold you here, and I'll deal with you later. And SubhanAllah, he leaves that, that, that man, Abu Mahjan, and he goes out to the battlefield. And his wife was watching the prisoner. And while the prisoner is there, Abu Mahjan is there, Abu Mahjan starts to cry. And he tells the wife of Sa'ad, I can't believe that when this is going on, when these people are struggling, that I'm sitting here tied up because I can't stop drinking alcohol. He said, please just let me go and join my brothers just for a day. I'll come back. I won't tell anyone that you let me go. I can't handle being here because I couldn't control my alcohol habit. I can't handle just sitting here while my brothers are out there struggling. And you know what? She listened. She, she saw the sincerity in that man. She let him go. Abu Mahjan wrapped his face, went to the battle of Qadisiyah, fought so bravely that after the battle, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu started to ask, who was the person that was veiled that was fighting that way? But while he was asking that, Abu Mahjan was already on his way back to the wife of Sa'ad to be tied up and act like nothing happens. So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu comes home and he tells his wife, and you know, when we come home, we talk about how the day went, right? You know, I was at work and this happened today. Guess what happened at work today? Sa'ad is coming home and saying, I was at the battle of Qadisiyah and let me tell you what happened. And SubhanAllah, he says that this man came that fought so bravely and we don't even know who he was. She said, do you know who that was? That was your prisoner, Abu Mahjan. He cried because he wanted to be with you and I let him go. And he came back and look at him. He went and he tied himself back up. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu went to Abu Mahjan and he released him. And he told Abu Mahjan, Wallahi, even if you drink again, I'm never gonna punish you again. And Abu Mahjan responded to Sa'ad and this is what I'm getting at. Abu Mahjan responded to Sa'ad and said, Wallahi, I am never going to drink again. 
What happened there? A shift in priorities. It was no longer just about him. It was about something greater than him. He realized that there was a cause that was greater than him that was out there that he needed to be a part of. And that kept him away from living out those animalistic desires that removed his self from himself. And that's something that Rasulullah told us would even happen with a man that would establish justice on this earth after it is filled with injustice. The Mahdi himself, Rasulullah said, Yuslihu Allahu fi layla. Allah will correct him in one night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reform him in one night. Sometimes by attaching yourself to those causes. Sometimes by going out there and by caring for other people and serving other people. As Gandhi once said something very beautiful, he said, find yourself by losing yourself in the service of people. By going out there and attaching yourself to those, those causes of justice and social justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to remove your ego and remove your lowly nafs from yourself. And that's why Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu and he complained that his heart was hard. Rasulullah sallallahu told him, you should accompany an orphan. Awsahu an yatim. You should accompany an orphan. You should care for him, show him mercy, and feed him from what you feed yourself. Because then you'll understand something about him. Then you'll understand life again. Then your priorities will shift because you would have attached yourself to a cause greater than yourself. Your heart naturally softens with that stuff. And so we can't fall into that false notion of spirituality where it's all about me and I just need to feel happy. And as long as I'm happy, it doesn't matter if everyone else in the world is miserable. When I see something going on in the world, when I see Syria or Egypt or Libya or what was being talked about today, or Burma or Somalia or any type of conflict that's going on in the world, wherever it may be, when I see any of that, I'm not going to change the channel because I don't want to depress myself. I need to engage those, I need to engage those causes and engage those local causes. When I see a homeless person on the side of the street, I need to engage that cause. When I see that someone is being oppressed in the community, I need to engage that cause. That's part of your spirituality. That's part of your iman. That's part of removing your nafs from yourself. Otherwise, it's a nafsi form of spirituality, which is completely contrary to Islam.